anyway, welcome, welcome everybody. And uh, we uh, will start with uh, revisiting the request from the Rumney School for permission to use the abutting town land uh, for classes, et cetera. Um, I believe we all received uh, the letter from Casey. Hopefully everybody had a chance to read it. Um, and I guess Casey, I would just ask you to uh, to give us an overview of the request and let us know what has happened and changed since we uh, had our last meeting. Sure, thanks for having me. Uh, I've met some of you, um, but my name is Casey Provost. I'm the principal at Romney School. I uh, look forward to meeting you sometime, whether it's visiting here outside at school or um, I'd be happy to visit when you have a meeting in person at some point as well. It's helpful to put faces to names. Um, so it is, Romney is a, is a busy place, just like all schools across Vermont, the country, and probably the world in many regards right now. Um, we have been planning for the return to in-person instruction here at school. We're also having remote learning that's happening as well. And uh, part of our programming that we're planning for uh, when we reopen next week is being able to take students um, outdoors as much as is possible, as much as is comfortable for them. We recognize that we're gonna be spending quite a bit of time in the building, um, but, but to the extent possible, and that, that again is comfortable for kids and for families, we wanna make sure to get some fresh air um, to reduce the, the spread of, of germs and to keep to keep folks as safe as possible. So um, we have, it's my understanding, it's only my second school year that I've been here at, at Romney, but it's my understanding that um, for a number of years that um, the school has used the, the woods and has gone out into the wood space um, all throughout the year and in, in a variety of capacities. Um, more explicitly this year, we're hoping to have um, a few classes that would identify a space in the wooded area that, that would be like their go-to spot. So we'll, each class will have some spots um, in the grassy areas around the school, um, including uh, looking also to go over to the soccer field area um, in the baseball or softball diamond as well. And then a couple of classrooms um, would like to have some spots in the woods. Um, so in order to uh, do that safely, um, we had, we've been partnering with Amy Butler from North Branch Nature Center, and Amy has taught a number of graduate and, and I'm assuming undergraduate courses as well, has worked with three of our classroom teachers who have completed the course, and that involves, um, before just going outside to use a space, ensuring that the safe is, uh, that the space is safe and that folks who are going outdoors have uh, the skills and resources to, to access outdoor education safely. Um, so part of that was doing a site assessment and wanting to make sure that um, that the woods, um, although they might may appear to be safe in many regards, wanting to have professionals come in and assess the, the area. So sorry, this is a long-winded answer uh, to your question, but uh, it's my understanding that since the last meeting, um, we had, had asked, um, Fire, sorry, I'm just look, looking at this. Fox Fire Tree Care LLC from Plainfield, uh, Nathan Ebert. Uh, he's a ISA certified arborist. So he came out to check out the spot um, in the woods again, which is on town property. He gave an estimate that I have forwarded uh, that it would cost uh, $2,000 uh, not to be removing trees, but to take two more substantial trees down and then there were about 10 or so smaller trees. So again, the, the entire intention of that is that um, it, is, it is town property. Uh, we appreciate your generosity in letting us uh, use that space. Um, it, it's so close and so convenient and so helpful for us um, and wanted to make sure that if we were to go out there and bring, be bring you know, numbers of groups out there that it, it is uh, ensured to be a safe space. So. Um, he's done that assessment. Uh, the cost would be $2,000 for him to take those trees down. We've had a very generous community uh, donation that we've received. So uh, we have the funds that we could pay for that $2,000, but we would be impacting, that work would be impacting town land. So we want to make sure that you are fully aware of that and supportive as well. And there's one other thing. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that Chris McVeigh had followed up with you, um, but following your last meeting uh, around the I think it was maybe the 19th of August, sorry, the date might be incorrect. 
Um, but Chris had followed up with, with myself in our central office and uh, we've reached out to our insurance company to add the town of Middlesex as an additional um, insured uh, entity on our, on our insurance. So I'll stop there. Hope that was helpful, but I, I apologize if it was too much. Thank you. Questions, board members? Yep. Uh, I thought we were going to have an on site trip, all, all, the, all of the select board. That never happened. Has anybody been out there to see those various sites? Peter? I walked around over there, Mary, but I couldn't really tell where the, where the sites were. Um, I didn't hear any overwhelming. <laughs> interest in in having a in having a site visit and uh the timing of the of the school getting back to us was such that it pretty much corresponded to this meeting so if yeah, we need right. to have a site visit i'm sure we can have one i don't think we really uh i don't think we really need i wasn't one. saying we needed one i was just saying you know wasn't that something we were gonna do but we're obviously i didn't do one didn't hear about one so i just wondered if anyone else had done it my other question is, was there a supplemental letter? I know Chris McVeigh told us about the insurance. Was, was there a supplemental letter about the Foxfire tree care that I've missed? I was just checking my email. Um, or is it just that original letter that we are talking about that you mentioned, Peter? It was in Casey's, it was an attachment, it was an estimate and it was an attachment to Casey's letter, but it basically just said, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it up in front of me. Tree work, two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. There wasn't a lot of detail. Okay, so there was a. We got forwarded a a, a, let, uh, a letter from Casey. Was it or was it directly to all of us? I I just haven't seen it. That's all. I believe I believe Sarah forwarded it to you either today or yesterday. Okay, well I'm just looking. Yes, on Monday. On Monday. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, so I guess the only question I have is, number one, is it, uh, I, I asked the question after getting the good news that we could be added to the school's insurance for no cost, which really was good news. Um, I would suggest in the future that we should ask for that all the time uh, because the school is, is using our, uh, our rec field. It's probably an oversight that we haven't done that in the past. Um, but, uh, I, I would expect Casey, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, but they will be sending us a certificate of insurance, I hope. Yeah, I'll ask that um, the central office send that. Okay. I would think they would, I would think they would know to do that, but uh, yeah. it would be good to, it would be good to have. That's what happened. I also you would have, suggest. That's what happens when you have an insurance uh, uh, person on your select board. Trying to protect your interest, Mary, at all times. Uh, yeah. And the town's interest and the school's interest. Um, and the kids. <laughs> especially the kids, yes. So the only question, I guess the only question I have, Casey, is my understanding it's not the intention to physically remove the trees, but to chop the big trees up into, up into chunks and then a uh, pile of brush from the smaller trees. And let yeah. let nature uh, let nature take care of it over time. Yes, exactly. And just the description, in, in case you don't have the attachment in front of you, it, like you said, it is pretty brief. Uh, but it says um, fell trees marked with flagging, pile brush, two larger hardwood trees, cut rounds to between twelve to sixteen inches, move wood from central gathering areas. So yes, letting uh, helping nature do its its work in, in that area. The only thing that occurred to me is those rounds might make pretty good seats. Right, right. I think we will we will capitalize on those. <laughs> Eventually, they would probably make firewood, but in the short run, they would make good seats. Well, I guess if if no one has any questions, does someone have a motion? So I'll moved. Approval. Sorry. A second. Bill, you want to do it? No, you. Mary, Mary's got the motion. I've got the second. What What's the motion? To allow the school to, to use the, to the town lands behind Rumney School? Yes. Yeah. That's what I said. I would just say, you know, for yeah. appropriate educational purposes or some kind of language like that, be, be general, not specific. Okay. Does that work for you, Casey? 
I just wanted to clarify that um, I don't know if it needs to be explicit that um, we could go ahead and work with Foxfire Tree Care to do this work as well, the, the, to address fell tree. So I don't know how yeah, explicit the motion that should be. needs to be. Are you okay putting that in the motion, Mary? Sure. Absolutely. Sure. I support it. I feel you'll accept the uh, amendment. amendment. Okay. So with with that, um, are we ready to vote? I think we are. Yeah. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Casey, you're all set. Thanks, guys. I hope it was. Well. Be careful and be safe. As I said to you on the phone, we want to uh, we want to help with this process, not hinder the process. We we are so appreciative of your support now and always. So thank you so much. Take care. Okay, nice. thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, considering whether to eliminate, modify petition requirements for 2021 town meeting funding requests over $250 due to COVID action possible. So uh, Sarah's had a number of requests from organizations saying in these times, uh, getting petitions is gonna be a going to be a challenge and potentially a safety hazard to those gathering uh, the petitions to which uh, I must admit I agree. Um, I don't know what the solution is. I hate to I hate to just throw the door wide open and I'm sure Dorinda would have a heart attack if we did that um, and rightly so. Um, I guess in thinking about it what I was wondering is if we said okay any organization which received money last year who only wants to get what they got last year with no change, we would agree that for this year only, there would be no petition requirement. But for any new organization, we would have a petition requirement. I like that. I don't know how that works for everybody else, but that was my thought about it. Um, I would also ask the question, is it possible that um, organizations who do want to petition for money that are new or change their amount or whatever, um, that they that we would accept um, electronic signatures? Yes, my, my concern would be how many organizations or your organization might be set up to accept electronic signatures. I don't know how many others would be, but I guess that would be a good, uh, a good thing for those who could do it. I mean, yeah. How would it work, Liz? I mean, they'd send you get it. A, to you get in, you would get, a. uh, well, there's a couple ways to do it. It's like, you, you know, someone could send me something in a PDF and I either use my, Adobe professional signature, or I actually have a snapshot of my signature that I can pull in as a photo. That's a signature. Or if you use, or if you use DocuSign, right? They'll even give you a suggested signature. So you know they'll put up some dummy version of your signature, and you just say it's okay. Right. Right. Exactly. And they, and they do it. Um, I guess I'm. I guess I would be fine with that. I mean, we'd have to work out the. We'd have to work out the the details, but it would be up to the organization to make us comfortable. With what I mean, the organization doing. would have to have everyone sign their own document. You wouldn't be asking us to sign a you know a thing with thirty signatures on it. You would be saying you would be saying I want, and they would have to hand you you know fifty pieces of paper with fifty signatures on it if they wanted to do that. And hopefully, 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 they could submit. I mean, I don't know if we could require them to use DocuSign. The nice thing about DocuSign is, is you would get a list of people who had signed the letter, so the town could even accept that list and not have to compile fifty letters or seventy-five letters or whatever it is. Uh, well, how does Sarah feel about that? Well, right now it sounds like it's going to take up a lot of space in the vault if I get uh, seventy-five pages per petition for of signatures. But um, but I don't think we're talking that many because we're talking if we allow everyone who was on it last year, we're yeah. talking to maybe a handful of people 
who would want to bother even to try to collect signatures? The, well, the, 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 I mean, the ultimate problem here is just approaching people within six feet um, and asking them to get signatures. Uh, you know, I don't think the school's going to allow, it's just, I don't know, it's going to be very complicated. I suppose it's up to the school to figure out whether or not people can stand in the driveway and collect signatures, but you're not going to have school concerts anymore. You're not going to have school, it's not right. going to be the hardest well, dinner. Well, I, I think it's, I, th I think the burden of that is up to the organization now. Right. You know, right. I think when they look at it, most organizations will say, you know what, we'd be glad, glad to get what we got last year with a simple letter request and, and filing our usual report. Um, yeah, the onus is on them to get the electronic signatures, not us. Right. So, uh, so I just I just was asking because I don't I was trying to figure out the logistics. But Sarah, who has called to the best of your recollection about this issue? Uh, well, I've received a number of calls and sometimes organizations, I mean, they do talk among each other, as Peter knows. And uh, so there's been just a collective conversation from I'm trying to think, I think it was the Council on Aging and, and some others who called and just said, you know, calling around to towns on just trying to get an idea of whether or not you're going to require us to submit petitions uh, because of COVID, blah, blah, blah. So uh, the, I, I can't remember exactly who called, but there were probably been about three or four calls. But again, they've been, they're calling also as a group. They're calling, you know, they're, they're breaking up the duties. You call Moortown, you call Montpelier, that, you know, that type of so is a as the um, library call. Um, I think I had a conversation with the library pretty early on. I'm trying to remember what that was about. I think there was some tentative concern about whether or not the uh, wh what the board was going to do. And I think at that stage of the game, we were just still so immersed in the beginning of COVID. I, there was no way to answer that question. I mean, there's not even a, there's a larger question about if we have town meeting, what will that look at look like? Right. Uh, Will these will these all go on? Will the legislature give a town like Middlesex the ability to put all these questions on the ballot? Considering town voters in the past have said no, we just want town officers on the ballot and big questions like the town plan, not these funding requests on the ballot. So there are some bigger hurdles to go through. But I think right now people just want to know if they need to circulate petitions. And um, how about the Waterbury? Um, um... Well, you know, it's been a kind of crazy six weeks. We've just gone through elections and taxes, and I, I don't remember exactly who's called. Uh, okay. I'm just wondering who is whatever, whatever we do, whatever we do, um, you know, we're not going to keep it a secret. So people no, will I mean, find out soon enough. I mean, we're, we're uh, excuse my expression, but we're dropping our pants a little bit, that's for sure. But we're not, at least we're not opening the, opening the gates completely. I don't know. I, I feel I feel uneasy saying we're just going to close the gates and not give out any money. I don't think that's the right approach. We no. definitely don't want to do that, but we do know that once they get on the ballot, they're, they're sure to the money. So that's it, there's got to be something of a gate somewhere along the line. And I guess for this year, everything's different. We just have to approach it that way. Well, that's in thinking about it, Mary. That's what I came up with because I was thinking about do we. Do we have some kind of a process where we have a committee that reviews the requests or we have the select board reviews the requests? I mean, I don't see that as a very fruitful process. Right. No, I, don't we, feel comfortable, I don't feel comfortable having us decide to cut somebody out that the town's no. been regularly supporting. Right. I say that they get what you suggested, Peter, that anyone who was on last year's um, town meeting book, who was in last year's town meeting book can ask for the same amount, but no more and or less. Um, and that we will accept electronic signatures in lieu of hand signatures if people are submitting um, a petition. I would add one more thing. They at least have to submit a letter to get that Yes, and submit yeah, a letter to, to submit, get. They have to submit a letter, and they have to submit their report. The other, right. the other requirements. Oh, I, do not, I, I, I do not want their reports. I mean, I pretty much asked them not. I mean, they have to submit their two hundred fifty word statement, but not their annual reports. No, no, that's, well, what, that's we what, what I mean. Whatever, whatever it is that they normally it's, submit, Sarah. 
statement. They can't just automatically get on without doing anything. They should send a letter and have that statement. Yeah, I support that. So I'll move that. Okay, so, so just to, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, so let me, let me, let me restate the motion. The motion is that uh, any organization was requesting more than $250 uh, with a letter and a, whatever you're calling it, Sarah, a statement uh, can go on the ballot for the same amount as last year without a petition. If they want more money, they have to submit a petition and we will agree to accept electronic signatures. And if they weren't on last year's ballot, we will accept it, but it has to be a petition. There has to be this required petition. Yeah. We just, so, though, we don't know whether or not these are gonna go on a ballot. So can we just budget and say, go before the voters at the town? Yes. Do we want to specify that they need to use either DocuSign or Adobe or? No, there's no. gonna be so many old people that don't, that like are gonna try to do their best and no, I think that's gonna be too much hassle for someone to. Okay. I mean, we're not gonna have some, it's not gonna be someone making up signatures. I mean, I know. you know, just say electronic no, I signatures. Think, I can't see, I just can't see anybody going door to door or standing, standing out in the school, in front of the school trying to get signatures. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I think it's, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be go to this link on front porch forum and fill out this, you know, Google doc survey thing. That's going to have some electronic signature potential there. Maybe all no those things exist now. Like yeah. there's all what, you know, there's clever ways. But maybe there won't be anybody new. Right. And it's, that's going to take a lot of work for someone to do that. And they may not bother. Yeah. Right. If, they, if they haven't been on our thing last year, the only ones I sort of worry about are places like, you know, North Branch Nature Center, which lost a lot of money this year because of their camps. They weren't on last year. So I don't think, I think they forgot it or they didn't get the right signatures or something. And, you well, know, they may want to come back and be like, oh, how do I get the signatures? But they may be savvy enough to just go around and collect them. Well, uh, I, I, don't to to, I don't want to worry about individual organizations i think that's a mistake i think we have to to establish a standard would i mean what we could oh, yeah, do support, if we wanted to do something for the north branch nature center is say anybody who'd been on there the last one of the last two years could be automatically on there but i'm against doing that me too yeah <laughs> last susan year clark are you are you listening susan yes i'm listening i'm here and I agree. Do you have any thoughts on this subject? <laughs> I, I, I do. And I, um, I like where this conversation is going. I think it makes sense. I, I agree that um, it's going to be hard for people to collect signatures in person, but giving um, groups the online um, uh, possibility of collecting signatures is a nice option. And basically, I mean, I think a lot of stuff with COVID is just kind of, it's going to be, what did we do last year? Um, let's try to kind of, you know, just stay the course and assume that the following year is when, you know, we might make, you know, bigger changes in, in various funding things. But I think you guys, I think I'm, I, I appreciate this conversation and agree with it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So are we, uh, are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We've done it. Thank you. You've, you've got it in good shape, Sarah. You're comfortable? I do. It's quite a long motion, but I think I got it all. Okay, perfect. Um, highway report. Uh, we don't have Steve with us. I did meet with him this morning. Uh, Paul, I don't know if you're in a place where you can uh, give us an update. Is Paul on? Yes. Well, let me let me give an update, and if Paul comes on and can add to it, he can. So I met it with is Steve. My off. What I know. Yeah, he's yeah. muted. That's all. Um, I met with Steve this morning um, to review 
uh, what's been going on over at the over at the pits, over at the not the pits, the pit. Uh, <laughs> and there is really good news there. I mean, we have not only uh, successfully gotten all our winter sand from this year, as many of you know, because you witnessed the trucks uh, roaring around town there for about two weeks. Uh, but the estimate is now that we have at least six years of winter sand there. Oh, wow. so there, there is a huge victory. We, we started out hoping we would have one or two years, and now it looks like five or six years, as well as a lot of other material uh, tailings and crusher run, uh, which we can use on our roads, getting material from our own pit instead of having to, uh, instead of having to buy it. So I would say all in all, uh, that's a huge, huge uh, success for us. Uh, Steve is planning as soon as possible to uh, be able to gate off the pit and create a separate entrance for the parking area there um, for uh, people who want to access the town forest. Uh, so there'll be a way to get into that parking area, but you won't be able to be a barrier of rocks or something. So you can get into the parking area, but you can't go back four wheeling in the, or whatever you want to do in the, uh, in the back of the pit. We have had a little four wheel action in there uh, already, and we want to be sure we prevent that. So and also, can't you shoot? It? You can't use it as a gun range or whatever they were doing down there. Well, I mean. It's going to be gated off and saying, you know, no, no public access or whatever the, whatever the appropriate language is. I mean, will somebody be able to walk in there? Of course, they will. They will. We can't prevent that. But the the good news is, uh, our our I'll call it uh, rolling the dice in terms of getting sand getting sand out of our own pit has turned out to be a big success. Steve is going to have. Uh, numbers for us showing exactly what the difference in cost was and at this point he said you know what I'm hoping is the cost is less than last year but it may not be that much less because we had a lot of work to do to get ready to draw the sand out he certainly doesn't think it's going to be more but in the next years we're all set up and ready to go so that's where we're going to uh, that's where we're going to see the savings so that's part one of the report. Part two of the report is they've been primarily working in the last two weeks uh, up on McCullough Hill Road and Upper Barnett Hill Road. I would encourage any of you to uh, to drive through McCullough. I did that today. I did not go up uh, Upper Barnett Hill, but they've done really serious ditching and ledge removal and stuff on uh, McCullough Road. It's dramatically uh, dramatically improved, and I presume the activity on Upper Barnett is the same. Uh, the plan is to uh, finish that up and then get in. There are some odds and ends projects to do this fall. We still haven't uh, repaired the uh, the bridge deck uh, on the bridge down below the school. Um, and there's just a lot of typical pre-winter catch up work, grading, ditching, whatever around town to get ready, uh, get ready for winter. Are you uh, saying? Shady Railroad Bridge? Yes. Well, it's not the Shady Railroad Bridge. It's off Shady Rail, but it's the it's the concrete. I can't think of the name of the road. I'm sorry. Shady Rail gonna... to Wood Road. Wood, Wood Road. Road. Yeah, the Wood Road yeah. Bridge. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, there are some wicked divots in that bridge. And Steve and I had a discussion about, um, so what, what we've done the last two times we've repaired that bridge is used this special concrete which is made for patching bridges liz you're at the beach and you've got a chair that's <laughs> coming and going <laughs> looking good that's um, as close as you're gonna get <laughs> anyway um the the problem with the concrete repair is it looks really good at first but it only lasts two years and Steve and I discussed, you know, what we think is going on is that every time a heavy truck drives over that bridge and maybe a not so heavy truck, the bridge flexes. So, you know, the concrete is rigid, the patch 
starts to separate from the bridge deck itself, then moisture gets in there, then it freezes, then it thaws, then it deteriorates. So uh, we're going to look in, I shouldn't say we, Steve is gonna look into whether it makes sense to put a one inch skim coat of asphalt over the bridge to seal it, or if there's some other material flexible type material or spray on application or something to try and seal the bridge better so it lasts a little uh lasts a little longer but in any event the uh the bridge deck will be repaired before winter and last but not least everybody's favorite subject we had a long discussion about uh about graders um we have poured a fair amount of money and steve didn't have the amount at his fingertips and, and i don't either uh into the grader this year but they've put in about all the money they want to do i mean they'd have to put in a bunch more so the plan is um potentially budget committee and select board and everybody else being in agreement to start the new grader process uh with this budget cycle with the idea that it would be financed over 10 years not uh not five years but we can't we can't put that off much longer, but obviously there's, you know, a lot of work to be done before we get there. But that's what uh, that's what Steve and Paul are are thinking, and I agree with them because this is a year when we're not buying a heavy truck or anything else. Hopefully, um, so what brings up the, this brings up the subject of um, you know the the whole idea of a you know capital uh, you know sort of improvement plan and looking at our budget over the next few years, five years, three to five years. And, you know, I, I think we owe it to the town to, I mean, COVID doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon. And, you know, maybe it begins as a virtual sort of subcommittee of people in the town who are interested in partaking in this conversation besides just us, because the greater is just one of a number of high ticket items that, you know, we've talked about and, and, you know, at this point too, given people's sort of uncertainty in their financial futures, you know, I just think that this is the time to really start thinking about that, um, engaging the community in that discussion. I don't know what other people I, think, but. I agree with you, Liz. I, the only thing I would say is uh, when it comes to the greater and the town equipment plan and budget, we've had that for a while. That's nothing new. And we've deferred this gra greater. We were supposed to do it last year, and we made the decision not to do it because of COVID. We're going we're gonna to back ourselves in a corner if we don't move forward. And if we put it on the ballot and the voters turn it down, they turn it down. But um i i'm starting to have nightmares about metal in the oil filter on the grader you know that one of these days they're just gonna redline the damn thing and we're not gonna have a grader so i i wholeheartedly agree we need to get back to uh the facilities the facilities discussion and all those discussions which we uh which we initiated but did we know if we had used up because i know that i had first mentioned a while ago, um, applying for um, a grant to have Bonnie um, Weninger help us with, you know, a plan around um, looking at a capital budget. And I think we had two opportunities to apply, and I, and I think that they've maybe both been applied for. One through um, Ru uh, Russ Bennett's group and the planning grants that we have those two planning grants we have two opportunities for planning grants and one was through the you know village and then i thought there might be that the uh, planning commission was going to apply for a grant too i don't know I, the answer to that i don't know the answer either but i was i was thinking the same thing that you know we really need to get back to that idea of a capital budget but weren't there two things where people were quite excited after the town meeting. I mean, the capital budget led me to think of the discussion at the end of town meeting and then afterwards when we talked to people informally. Weren't there two things where people wanted to have a lot of input? I think the two things, Mary, were uh, what I will call a facilities, you know, town clerk's office, town garage, that, that thing. And then the other was 
a town highway plan, which would include the the plan for uh, for equipment. And we yeah. have done historically a highway plan, um, but in getting more public input and having a more open process. I think. Well, also, I mean, I think it all arose when they wanted to put up those signs on Route 12. I think they wanted to have it more than just um, we're going to work on this road, we're going to work on that road. I mean, an expansive definition of improving roads, I guess, is what to include signage at least. Right. The, that does bring me bring me back to one other thing, and then I'll I'll finish up your thought. I did I did suggest to Steve this morning that with school opening, this was the time to buy those damn signs and get them up. Let's let's be uh, let's be pro proactive and get them up before the, the people start saying, "Hey, what happened to our sign? Schools open, you know, blah blah blah." You're talking about Wrightsville, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Okay. So, so hopefully, I mean, I don't know whether we can get them open. I'm, I'm sure we can't probably get them up before uh, next week when schools open. But I, I moved them up near the top of the uh, near the top of the list. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have, those, those signs need to be permitted by the state of Vermont. We need to submit a permit application for the state of Vermont. Sarah, I know, I know all the issues. All I want to do is move forward, not wait till next spring. Is what I'm so, saying. No, no. I guess my question is, who's moving forward? Whose responsibility is it to do the the permitting for those signs? I would say it's all. Okay. I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't. I don't know what the what the usual process is. But normally, when we need a state permit, it goes through Paul. Okay. Just that helps a lot. You know, and there are, and there are, and, and I he isn't he isn't demuting himself and, and objecting. So. I don't know the process. This isn't my thing. We have to have a special kind of special kind of breakaway posts and some other things for uh, because it's going to be in the state right away. And you're absolutely right. We need state permits and all that. I just the school was an important part of the issue. The bus is there, and it was approved at town meeting. And I just want to make sure we follow through and do it before people start complaining. Yeah, hey, and then when school not. starts, if they're not there, we can say they've been ordered. <laughs> well, whatever, whatever. Oh, I, just, I want to get them done. So getting, <laughs> getting, getting, back to the, getting back to the planning process, um, I, wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly support that, um, making the, the, the road and, and equipment thing, uh, have a couple of public meetings. If nobody shows up, we say we had the public meetings. I mean, don't get me wrong. As I've said before, anybody in town can attend our budget discussion when we go over that plan and we go over the plan for equipment. But that said, whether we have a special select board meeting where we focus just on that issue, or we have a separate hearing, or we just have an informal meeting, we committed to having a more public process, and I think it's a good idea. So let's make sure we let's make sure we follow up follow up with both of some suggestions in terms of like what that might look like, or would it make sense to have like someone? Yeah, I mean, I really like the idea of engaging um, the Bonnie um, from um, Vermont Regional Planning. Um, but I mean, and there's a grant for that, which I, I really think we, we've we already written our two grants that we could write. And so I don't think that's available to us right now, but do you have some thoughts on that, Susan Clark, in terms of what that might look like to do a community engagement that's more than just, hey, here's the link to Zoom, good luck. <laughs> right, yeah, I, I, I do feel like that was one of the things that came out of town meeting last year was that people, um, you know, there were numerous projects that um, sounded like they were coming down the road at us. You know, Sarah talked about the town hall renovations. There was talk about the greater, there were other um, issues and um, the recognition that we weren't gonna be able to, you know, afford everything and um, people's concerns um, about spending too much added to that um, COVID now. Um, so people are even more concerned about um, finances. Um, I, I think that it, I think that a, you know, a facilitator could help us design a good little process. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but it might um, involve breakout groups so that people could talk about, uh, um, I think uh, um, uh, start with values, 
start with some of the qualities that people want in um, priority spending. What are the most important things now? What are the most important things in the future? So that people could talk broadly um, first before you sort of get into that. Um, sometimes these conversations can quickly devolve into, you know, greater versus town uh, vault, you know, and just sort of A versus B instead of really talking about where we can um, uh, collectively move forward together. So I think it, it helps to not have it be a hearing situation and instead um, uh, have it be a less formal, um, more deliberative process. It, I think it could help the select board inform its um, prioritization process if you had a better um, sort of qualitative understanding of what the biggest priorities were um, of, of the people who chose to participate in that process. Mm -hmm. I find just from my experience with work, um, you know, a lot of times we have these larger meetings and breakout rooms um, are sort of fun and helpful. You know, there's maybe three or four person people in your room. So basically, if it's the group of us, I might, you know, be with Peter and Mary and the three of us sit and talk about it. And then we all Don't come back. with you, Liz. You're too tough. Well, I want and then we all come back simple. together and share like what our common, you know, what our theme was or what we prioritized. And then, but you have a, you, you sort of have a person who oversees the meeting and uh, moderates it. And, um, and I mean, I think that given, given the fact that before we know it, town meeting is going to happen again, <laughs> that yeah. we start sure. this process oh. now. Uh, one of the thing, one of my big concerns about this is, I I like all that, but I just wonder in the back of my mind, like you know, Sarah and I were talking the other day about what town meeting is going to look like. You know, my experience with Zoom is it works pretty well if you have ten or twelve people, maybe maybe a few more, but when all of a sudden you have fifty or sixty or a, a whole town meeting, a hundred and fifty. Uh, really doesn't work that well in my right. in my experience so you know that may be all we have for uh for town meeting i don't know but you know if we're gonna have a socially distanced town meeting we're gonna be halfway up the side of mount hunger trying to separate everybody i don't think that's gonna work give everybody a megaphone i don't know um but a zoom meeting with a lot of people you've got to have a moderator person who is really on top of their game to, to control a process. It's Susan. Susan, you want to volunteer to help us with this? <laughs> that, yeah. I, I, I definitely would be glad to help. I don't think that I'm necessarily the tech person um, or, or even necessarily the Zoom moderator, but I will say that facilitators that I know since last March have been, you know, had a J curve of learning of how to have exactly the kind of meetings that you're talking about, Peter. Right. So, I mean, it, you know, it used to be sure, you know, you would know how to have a, you know, a five person or a 10 person Zoom meeting, but now people are using a variety of technologies to, to have the kind of meetings that we're talking about. And I, I think that if you were gonna do that, you would wanna have multiple um, ways for people to participate. You would hope that they might come to a Zoom meeting, but you also might have a way for them to, you know, fill out a five question questionnaire or, you know, so that people could have multiple ways to engage in, uh, in case they, you know, they, they didn't, they, they weren't comfortable with the technology or they didn't, you know, have access to a computer or whatever. You, you want to have a, um, uh, a, a diverse way to do it. But the good, um, news, the good news is, I'm sure you know, with Zoom, uh, you can also just call in. Right. And that's, yes. that's relatively easy to do as long as you have a moderator who you know recognizes the call in people and just doesn't respond to the waving hands and the I, th I think the key is having an experienced zoom moderator i think it's offering potentially some zoom classes and some practice um so people know what to expect they know how to mute themselves unmute themselves um they know what speaker view is rather than group view because the bigger the group gets, the more you need to use speaker view so you can, you know, you see the person who's who's talking. I, I don't know the answer to these questions, but I, I agree with Liz. This is going to be coming down the coming down the road fast. Yeah. And uh, Peter, would you I mean, like, I'm just wondering, Susan, if you have any ideas of, you know, for someone to facilitate, say, a hour and a half meeting 
because they get long on Zoom. People don't want to be sitting there for two hours, but like an hour and a half meeting, maybe, you know, for three months, once a month, sure. like what kind of cost would, would some, would we be looking at to, um, to pay someone? Right. That's a good question. I actually just was talking to Delia, you know, my sister who facilitated what's next Middlesex. Um, and she was, she was talking with the town of Virgins about doing one, it was one 90 minute meeting, but doing the entire, you know, it was, um, around a, a complex issue that they're dealing with, but it was one of these kind of things where you invite the whole community, you break up into small groups, um, you create the, you know, the, the, the purpose statement and all that kind of stuff. So she was estimating it would take her sort of five conversations to make sure that she was designing the meeting that the town wanted and then, um, and then actually facilitate that meeting. And she's been doing so many of these that I think that her estimate was something like $1,500. I mean, which I consider to be really cheap for that kind of um, expertise. And I, there may be other people who would do it for cheaper. There, I'm sure there will be lots of people who would do it for more. Um, but uh, it, I wonder if the, um, you mentioned the, the Regional Planning Commission. I just wonder if there are organizations maybe that the town has access to that might um, offer um, uh, sort of a blueprint for how a conversation like this could happen or if there are moderators out there who are doing this work. Well, I think we could also ask Sarah whether the town clerks are getting together any ideas or the league. Sarah, are you there? Where are you? I think right now we're just trying to get past uh, the election. Uh, we're, we're, we've all been swamped beyond belief. And I mean, most of us were here late trying to get the grant in. So we're Getting past our tax seasons, just uh, we're, we're the most important thing for town meeting right now on our plates is simply answering the petition question, which is what you've done, and uh, moving forward. But you know, we you know even the legislature doesn't know what town town meeting is going to look like, so it's it's all kind of up in the air. Well, yeah, I, I would, I'll I would, offer to work um, maybe with I'll, I'll get in touch with Bonnie for some ideas and maybe have a conversation with Susan about like what what this would look like, not necessarily what exactly we're going to talk about within it, but like, you know, the, not the structure itself of the meeting, but like what the, how the meeting would roll and, and, and how many we would want to have, um, and see if actually there is still a planning grant available that hasn't been applied that we can apply for, um, to help us fund a facilitator. Cause that would be good. I mean, there may be some COVID, I mean, there's so much COVID money out there. This may be, some COVID money that we can access to to do this. Um, Susan, does that sound like something you'd be willing to help me out with? Absolutely. I, I've been, so one of the reasons I wanted to come to this meeting, I'm just, I'm really glad to hear you guys thinking ahead because the, having these kind of conversations in the fall or winter is, is the way to have town meeting, whatever it is, um, be more successful because we can't have we can't have a conversation last March that said we want to have this conversation and then the following March say well we didn't quite get around to it. So um, I, I love that idea. Um, and I would just back up what Sarah said, uh, all the conversations I've had with um, the League of Cities and Towns and Secretary of State's office about sort of my I'm, I'm questioning what is town meeting going to look like? Um, have met with a, a whole lot of, let us just get past the November elections, please. You know, so people, it's very, very hard to think about. And yet, of course, we have to be thinking about it now because if we wait until November to think, I mean, you guys are already going to be setting the agendas and the budgets, and it's it. We have to do some proactive work, and I'm more than willing to. to well, the other that. the other problem is if we're talking about hiring somebody to help us with this, they're going to get booked up fast. Right. So. You know, whoever those whoever those people are, let's try and be at the head of the line, even if we can't yet commit and they can't commit, but be on the... You know, there may also be someone in town that, you know, has a, this skill or who has developed this skill, at least for, you know, managing the Zoom meetings. If, I mean, if... my, my concern is, and uh, I think it's a good concern, is so many people, including myself, have some Zoom experience. I feel like I spend half my life in Zoom meetings. Uh, and I've hosted Zoom meetings and everything else. I, I would not consider myself qualified to do this. Um, it's important, I think, that the person doing it has to be removed from the issue and it's just focusing on managing the meeting. 
Totally, yes. The bottom line is I'm afraid there are a lot of people who say, oh, sure, I can do it. I do Zoom meetings for our office of 10 people all the time. Well, I think this is a totally different thing than a meeting for 10 people. Vic, what do you think? He's not, he's not on. Vic, what happened? No, oh, he's there. Mm -hmm. I can just remember what's next, Middlesex, and that that meeting there, and I put a lot, we put a lot of time in that, and uh, I was very upset, and Susan knows this, we've talked about it, uh, at the last minute, a couple of uh, influential people stepped in and changed uh, our, our whole uh, outlook on what was going on and what we wanted, and uh, then it and what we were working on just fizzled out. And I just hate to see that happen again. Hmm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I had the same experience with our subgroup. When I, when I participated, the moderator of our subgroup just took over and put down her agenda and didn't listen to anything anybody else on the subcommittee had to say. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> was I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, there were some I was really shocked that in the last uh, couple of hours or last on uh, the last day we were there, uh, everything that we had talked and we put a lot of effort in. I don't think Susan can say that uh, w w we didn't put a lot of effort in there. I went to just about every meeting it was there. And then, you know, right at the last, last half hour, it just took over. And yeah, I, I just get excited about it, talking about it now. So I have to stop. <laughs> Well, I think that I, I go back to what I said a minute ago, having whoever is running the small groups or moderating the whole meeting has to be someone who doesn't have an agenda in the process. They need to be somebody who is organizing the process, but helping everybody build consensus, not putting forth their own agenda at the end. And I think you know, what I remember the what what next Middlesex process was, the first part was very much like that. And then the end, I think, at least the person who, and I can't even remember who it is now, but they definitely took over right at the end and said, these are the five points that our committee agrees on. And I'm sitting there saying, I don't agree to that. Right. But four other people raised their hand and she didn't care. She, that's what she reported out, was exactly what she wanted to report out, which yeah. I thought was bad, but anyway. Weird. And I just, I just want to say that my heart is breaking to hear this, and I, I, I have had a conversation with Vic about this, a couple of them, and I, um, I do. It does sound as if the small group facilitation was inadequate um, at what's next, Middlesex. I think we had a, a, a good bigger process, and the small group processes were spotty, and we have two committees that came out of What's Next Middlesex that have continued to do, well, th three really that have continued to do, um, I think, good work for the town. But we also have um, some, you know, some, some, some committee, uh, what, at least one committee, if not two, that, um, that the, the, the description that you're, that you're describing um, is, is really heartbreaking. So I just want to acknowledge that, that, it, that there's, a, there's a mix of outcomes and it all comes down to good facilitation. Susan, I'm not, I don't, I don't think Vic is either. I'm not pointing any fingers at you. I, I'm just saying, you know, that's something we want to try and avoid in the future. Right. Hey. I'm not, I'm not pointing any finger at you, Susan. Uh, it wasn't, uh, I, I don't, I, 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 I could not fathom that it any way would be your fault that what that happened. But, uh, I don't even know where these people came from. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I do we need to we need to move on tonight. Yeah. Um, Liz, I I appreciate you offering to work on that, and and Susan, um, I think, you know, there are going to be a lot of people from the Secretary of State's office to the League of Cities and Towns to the legislature to every yeah. community in Vermont that are going to be struggling with this, and a lot of smart people are going to be trying to trying to figure it out. But I think getting ahead of the curve, especially if we think we want to hire uh people yeah. to help us uh is a good thing and i i agree liz that, that bonnie is a great person to uh 
to get She's involved. super busy, I have to say. Like, we're all just so freaking busy, and I don't know how she gets, she doesn't get all her work done, so I'm a little worried about whether or not she'll be able to be terribly helpful right now, but, um, but I'll, I'll shoot her an email, and I talk to her, like, every week, so. Well, and that's going to be Well, and if there's grant money available. She hasn't already risen to the top of their, uh, to top of their to-do list. It's going to very soon, that's for sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. It was good. And thank you, Susan. You bet. Um, so that concludes the highway report. <laughs> Can I, Peter? <laughs> Moving right along. Wait. Hey. Yeah. Peter, can I ask, uh, can I give you a ring maybe tomorrow or something and discuss uh, about the, the uh, bridge? I asked some questions. Uh, you, you, you said a couple of things there that made me nervous, and I've had asked some questions today uh, of the uh, road crew. Uh, Steve was up here, and uh, I got a couple of ideas that might, might be beneficial uh, to repairing that bridge. I would love that, Victor. Give me a call. I'll be around. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Vic. Your report, Dorinda. Short and sweet. I don't have anything to report other than tax money is coming in. It better. It's due tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it seems to be coming in pretty well, so. Good, good. Because that's certainly been a concern, so. Uh, can I just chime in on something? I um, last night uh, submitted a. We, today was the deadline for a digitization. This is COVID money, the kind of COVID money you guys have been talking about. So here's what I put in. Hold on. Uh, I asked for about fourteen thousand dollars. We can we can request up to twenty thousand dollars. This is going to be this money is funneled through the Department of Taxes and. $4,000 would be allocated toward uh, a new computer for a new recording computer and scanner equipment because our contract with ACS is coming up in May and we either pay for it gradually through our ACS contract or if we can get the state to pay for it now, that'll come off our contract when we renew in May. And then uh, about $10,000 for taking the volumes all the way back to the card, the dreaded card catalogs, volume 38. We've already made progress going from 98 to 84 with the, before we had the original uh, bid from ACS Avenue Insights, Conduit, whatever you want to call them. So I've talked to Conduit. I think we're going to stick with them because switching vendors right now for scanning is just too big of a hassle. The grant is completely unrealistic it says that the money must if we get the money it must be expended before december 2020 i don't know how that's possible i mean all these vendors are completely up to their eyeballs right now as everyone's scrambling to get their land records uh digitized so i we're just gonna have to ask for an extension but i think there's a good chance we might get something and if we do that'll take care of at least one computer station and probably some more stuff great sarah thanks for well, having me yeah but Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Wow. You just did that all on your own. That's terrific. Wasn't really hard. They made it really simple for you. Dara, just <laughs> say, just say thank you. <laughs> Don't say how easy it was. <laughs> well, it was really easy. Okay, I move okay, approval. Moving right along, approval of the August 18th, 2020 select board minutes. I move it. Move them. Second. Second. Thank you, Phil. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes of August 18th, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, orders either have or will be uh, approved, Dorinda. All set. I mean, I was, uh, and I know Steve isn't uh, here, but I was horrified to see that $5,000 repay. That, that was an inspection on the truck that turned into a $5,000 bill, once again, in Charlotte Boys. And they kept our truck for a whole week right when we needed it the most uh, again. So anyway, it is what it is. We got to fix the truck. Um, Correspondent, Sarah? Nope. And oh, there is. Any other business? 
Did Jill want to say anything? Jill Drury, who's here as a guest? No, we're good. Okay. Is that okay. Randy? It is. Hi, Randy. Hi. <laughs> Paul, if, Paul, if you can hear us, do you have anything to add to any of the highway stuff? I don't think he's here. Uh, I, think he's, I think he just got cut off and he just right. wasn't even able to take himself off. Right. Um, so I guess that concludes our, uh, our meeting for this evening. Uh, I don't see us, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't see us changing from Zoom meetings anytime soon. I was thinking it might be a nice idea to have a socially distanced select board meeting before the weather got too cold, but it's already almost too cold. Who can predict the weather ahead? We don't want to be sitting out in the parking lot behind the town hall if it's 40 degrees <laughs> out, I don't think. Or, or sitting on those, uh, those lot, those- uh, Those logs in the woods behind the school, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think this is, you know- We can build a fire there. <laughs> yeah. Bonfire. Hey, I mean, it's, uh, it's working and I really do, uh, I really do appreciate everybody's uh, indulgence and understanding and patience and uh, Susan and Vic and uh, Randy and, Others, others who've been participating in our meetings, I, I appreciate that too. I mean, we haven't had participation like this in our uh, That's great together meetings. So maybe we, can know. Get, maybe we can get some more people to start participating. How does, how does we've got Orca, some room in our select board meetings. So that's not an issue, I don't think. So how does Orca transmit all this stuff? Peter, this is Randy. Um, I just have one question with the talk about moving these back to. Uh, um you know in-person meetings uh is the intention to you know that's a ways off anyway but one that does resume is the intention to uh continue on with the zoom so that uh folks like myself who might have a hard time being there in person uh can still attend through uh, a platform like this um i would say randy undetermined but we're gonna when the time comes we're gonna look at all the options i mean i I like that idea. I don't think it will be quite as quite as user friendly if you're on the computer screen down at the end of the table. But if it enables people to participate in our select board meetings, I'm all in favor of it. I mean, we heard loud and clear last year, people want a more open process. And I said, well, come to any of our select board meetings. Well, they never come, but a few of you have started showing up at our meetings and I appreciate it. So I would say it's highly likely that we would do it, but I can't we haven't made that decision yet. And I think it's, I think we're gonna have some time. Yeah, I know, I, I agree with you and, and uh, thanks. I wanna know what does ORCA do? How do they, is there someone from ORCA who can talk to what you do? Is that Susan Bettman there or somebody else? I think it's automated, Mary. Oh, well, I mean, what do they do? They're able to get this whole picture? I. And I include them as one of the participants and they and they record it and with the and we they all record it, they get the same screen that we get I believe but where do you get to see it on their website yeah <laughs> we have a link on our website to them well interesting so people had do you have any idea whether anybody's ever gone to the website and looked at it Sarah yes I, I just I don't have a way of checking that I do know people who have gone there and actually somebody who lives out of state who has property here watches every select board meeting. Yeah. Oh, I've heard, Hi. <laughs> I, I've heard from a number of people that, that, that they go in and look at it. So I think it's definitely, I mean, not as many, not as many as we might hope, but uh, again, anything that's, that's we can do we, to have it be a more open process. Yeah, that would, that would that's be good. a lot different than a lot different than reading the minutes. Right. Okay, everyone. All righty. Pretty good. Hour and 15 minutes. Our meetings are a lot shorter when they're on Zoom. Nice to see everybody. Great to see you. Yep. Have a good evening, everybody. I promise I'm paying my taxes tomorrow. Don't worry. I'll send you a notice if not. Oh, All right. You're right. <laughs> right here, right on the top of the pile, Dorinda. Don't worry. I went in yesterday. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are taxes due tomorrow? Yes, yes. Liz.
Well, mine come out automatically, so I don't know. I just like. Then, yeah, no. Okay, good to know. Mine come out automatically <laughs> as long as I write the check. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> I, do, I will say that we did have a taxpayer write me today saying that there was a typo on the tax bill, but I don't know if I've noticed it or not, but that taxes, it says that taxes are due 9-2 when I'm sure we meant 9-20. I, I had the horrible duty of informing them, no, actually it's due 9-2, not 9-20-20-20. Oh. oh. <laughs> Better that they call today than the day after tomorrow. That's very true. <laughs> Okay, everybody, have a good evening. Bye. 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 Bye.